Hey folks, Will Owen here with JetBoatPilot.com. Today's video, we're going to shoot the brand new Perfect Pass. Uh, this is the plug and play version for the single engine Yamaha jet boats. Uh, this is a, a first, it's brand new, uh, with the advent of the thrust vector wake, and that's really getting a, a super clean uh, surf wave now behind 19 footers. Uh, now it's really important to get that perfect GPS based speed. So the Perfect Pass, as we found, has been just an ideal solution for that to lock in that perfect speed. You as a, a driver can spend a lot more time enjoying your day and paying attention to what's going on around you uh, as compared to trying to manage speed all day long. So you really, you really appreciate this for those of you drivers that are trying this now without a perfect pass. Um, we've already done the unboxing here and I want to kind of start uh, going through some of the steps to do the installation. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions about this, obviously you can free, feel free to reach out to us. Um, First off, this uh, Perfect Pass system works for any Yamaha 19-footer from 2012 up to today. doesn't matter if it's an FSH or 190, 192, 195. They all have the same type of wiring and uh, throttle position sensor, so they'll all work. Uh, and then what you'll see over my shoulder here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of give you a rundown of what we've already got pulled out here and then some tools you're going to need to use. And then right behind that, we'll get into uh, stage one. We'll do this in three stages, uh, and then when we get done, we'll, we'll wrap it all up. So. Uh, all total, probably going to see about 30 minutes to an hour, uh, depending on your uh, proficiency working with tools. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward install, not, not much to it at all. So well, let's dive right in. What you see right over here on the right, you'll see it comes with some installation instructions. Uh, really simple to, uh, to get through those. Uh, you're going to see a gauge. Now your, your gauge might be the 3.5 inch gauge. Uh, I have opted for on this particular boat the 5 inch external display, but if you've got the 3.5, there's a separate uh, installation step that the instruction manual will tell you how to do uh, if you have that gauge cluster. It's gonna actually replace the gauge in your dash, um, the regular Speedo. But on the newer style connects equipped boats, uh, you'll need to use the five inch display like we have here. It comes with a ram mount, which has already been installed on this boat. We'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, also, you're gonna have inside the box, you're gonna have the brain box. This is the main processor. This will go inside the helm area. You're gonna get a couple of uh, T-taps here a Garmin GPS puck for your GPS speed monitoring. Uh, you're going to get a throttle inter interface module. This goes inside your engine bay and a cord to connect everything together. Um, as well as the ram mount, which we've already talked about on this five, in five inch display, if you'll follow the camera, we've already adhered it to this little sidewall here. Adhesion has actually worked great for this. If you want to drill it in or, or screw it in, you can, but we've actually used the adhesive that came with it. It works great. And uh, we'll show you some of those steps in just a moment here. We're going to recommend you have some sort of uh, flexible uh, tubing like this to help snake some of the wires. Uh, I would recommend some tape to go along with that. Uh, a work light is always handy. We've got a uh, standard ratchet here. This is a 3 8 drive and we're using a 11 millimeter on this. Today uh, you can use deep well or short on that one. We've also got a uh, smaller quarter inch ratchet with an extension and a, a nine millimeter deep well and a uh, 11 millimeter I believe uh, short also a short nine millimeter you may need that in some of the spots inside the console we've got a um, drill bit here this is a 13 30 seconds and I'll show you where we use that in just a moment uh, we had to make one little hole for our GPS puck uh, small little stubby number two Phillips head screwdriver uh, flathead screwdriver is always handy in case you need to do any kind of prying uh, a drill with a number two uh, Phillips head and then also some zip ties when we start kind of getting everything all cleaned up. You may also want to have your shop back handy when you start doing that one little drill operation. It'd be nice to have that shop back handy uh, to get up any of the chips and fiberglass and aluminum that sort of thing. So, All right, well that's all for the parts that are included with the kit. First step that you want to go through before we uh, jump into this installation is turn off your battery. Make sure it's completely switched off and I always like to pull the kill switch and get it uh, out of the way too, just to be safe. Um, we'll start in the engine bay. So if you'll follow the camera, we're gonna open up inside the engine bay. Let me grab the work light. I'm gonna grab my socket wrench here, make sure I've got the right socket and screwdriver. Uh, bring the camera around this way. We are going to be removing from the sidewall here, this uh, throttle position sensor. I've already done all the hard work for you already to save time. So in this particular boat, we're going to remove the seat cushion. And if you'll bring the camera over this way, you'll notice you've got two Phillips head screws that hold it in place. And if you'll bring the camera on this side, 
you have two 11 millimeter uh, nylock nuts. And uh, what we're gonna do is pull those off and pull the screws out. And that's gonna allow us to take off the cable here for the first, uh, and I've actually already done all this. You're gonna use a Phillips head and a, a number or 11 millimeter to undo this. I've already done all the hard work here, so I'll do it by hand. We're gonna take this first bolt here and hold it steady while we pull the nut off the back side. And uh, once we've done that, we'll just set the nuts and the washers down and on the floor here, we'll pull this bolt out and hold on to that. Don't drop it down in the bottom of the engine bay. I'm sure some of you will do that. That's going to be fun fishing that thing out. All right. So we have now pulled the bolts out. Our throttle position sensor is loose. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reach underneath and there is a cable. If you can see the camera here, you see that gray plug there? I've already done all the hard work for this. We're going to slide that off. And if you see on the back side, there's a little press button there for your thumb. What you do is you squeeze that button, and then it lets you slide it off. So we're going to, for now, just leave that right where it's at. And we are going to take... the wiring bundle that came with the unit, as well as this uh, throttle interface module, we're going to, first thing we're gonna do, is I wanna take the throttle interface module, we're gonna plug in the gray to the plug here that we just got finished disconnecting. We're gonna align the gray with the gray and you just want to make sure that your tabs are lined up. See the little lines on the top there? We'll align those here. If it gets a little tight for you, you can always undo that wire uh, tie on the side there. What you want to do is you squeeze this tight. Make sure you hear the click, which we just did. All right, now I'm going to take the other end, and we're going to connect it to the underside of the throttle position sensor. A little tight in this engine bay here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. We have got the little thumb latch here on the front. If you can see that, squeeze it on. Got a nice click there. All right, good. So that's in place. We know we've clicked it in place. So now we're going to take our long bolt here, insert it back inside. Can you see inside the hole there? And it's gonna go back into its original mount hole. And what I'll do is just start this nut and washer on the back side. We'll take the second screw. We we'll go on the back side where it goes through the body. We'll align it. Get our washer and our nut back on the back side here. And we're gonna tighten that down in just a moment. Before we do that, we've got our our uh, main connection wire here from the uh, module here that goes up to the brain box. So I want to get that ready to run through this little opening. Uh, inside the engine bay on this boat, there's an easy to access hole near the back. And uh, if you'll follow the camera, I'll show you. Right here. Do you see where my fingers pointed there? Nice large hole there. So what I'm gonna do is reach in from the inside and we're gonna pass this plug. It's a kind of a larger plug. We'll pass it through. I'm gonna snake this around. And on the back side of this module here, you've got a uh, watertight plug. I'm gonna to have to align the tabs, press them together, hear the click. And once you've heard that click, you know we're good to go there. All right, we'll come back later and we'll uh, zip tie all this together and keep everything nice and neat and away from touching anything hot. But for the sake of time, we're going to move forward here. I want to show you where that wire goes. Take the other end of the wire out. On the other end of this wire here, by the way, this is where our power wires are connected. It's got a fuse in line. You've got your ground. Yes, I am profusely sweating again. It is the middle of August in Central and uh, North Florida. It is humid, humid, humid today. I am sweating. Uh, we decided to shoot this video at night and it's still hot in here. 
All right, so this cord is plenty long enough to run it to the front of the boat. I'm going to take this end and with my flexible tubing, we're going to secure it to the end of this wire. Stick with us. All right, so now we've got our uh, flexible rod here connected to the end of the wire. We're going to snake this wire up the side of the boat. It's going to run from here all the way up the side, and it's going to come up into the engine or into the helm area right behind the helm there. So I will try to do the best I can to show you with this, but obviously it's tight quarters, so I want to be able to show you this is very little. That's why the flexible rod is nice. You can kind of pass it around these corners here. All right, we got our wire pulled up here. Awful tight spaces. We'll go ahead and cut this tape and then we'll snip, pull the rest of it up and I'll show you a trick. Let me grab the camera. We're gonna snake that wire right through the opening. I don't know if you can see it there. There's a little oval kind of rounded opening there. We'll try to pull the wire right through that spot. All right, so we've got our wire pulled now from the uh, engine compartment all the way back around to the front. So uh, before we move forward, I just want to make sure I mention there is some extra wire uh, still in the under seat compartment there on that side, on the starboard side there. We don't want to pull the wire too terribly tight at this moment, so leave yourself some slack because you're going to have to go back later on and secure everything with some zip ties. So try to stay, leave yourself a little bit of room. Also, I talked earlier about uh, where we're going to pass this wire. I want to show you. Can you see with the camera? where I'm trying to pass this wire here. I like to, to pass the wire around that corner. And if we can do that, then it's gonna keep all the wiring inside this helm area instead of getting out into the storage area where you've got some of your belongings. So you can do this, this will make it a lot better. All right, that'll wrap up the first step. Now what we're gonna do is focus on the uh, display gauge and then running the wires for the display into the helm area. All right, so now we're on to step two, which is gonna to be to install the display. You'll notice that on the end of this display, it's got a really large connector. And so it really is difficult to cut a hole big enough for this to pass through. So we like to find ways to avoid having to cut a hole. Uh, we found a way on this boat. I think it's gonna work great. In order to do so, we've done a couple of preparatory steps. So before we do the, the gauge, let me put it down. I'm going to show you what we're doing. First off, we did go ahead and bring the camera over. We, we went ahead and installed our ram mount right here on the side, uh, right up near to the dash. Uh, we used adhesive. It comes with the kit. Just prep this area nice with acetone. Let it dry. Peel and stick. Uh, it's good probably to put the knob on the back side like this. You can orient it however you like, but that's kind of what works for us. Um, you'll notice that I've got this cup holder out. To remove this cup holder, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the dash off to run the wire behind the dash. Uh, you rotate, this uh, trim ring will come off. There's three Phillips head screws. Pull the screws. You can pull the cup holder out of the console here. We'll just set this aside for a moment. There is a drain hose connected to the bottom of that, so you will need to pull that loose from the inside to get that off. Uh, next, we went ahead and pulled the little nine millimeter bolts loose inside the console so we can get this switch out. This will be helpful for running, doing the wiring in just a moment. I wanted you to see that. There's just three simple little nine millimeter nuts. You just back those off so you can get that pulled out. It's easy to work with and then we'll, we'll button that all back up in just a minute. All right, in the, the dash, to pull this off, there's probably, I don't know, eight or ten uh, screws on the back side holding it to the, uh, the fiberglass and there's the same little nine millimeter nut. Pulled all those off and then uh, in order to get it loose, we had to loosen the, um, the brow here. There are four bolts uh, holding it down, plus one Phillips head over in this corner over here. You'll see right here in this corner, underneath, inside the console there, there is a uh, Phillips head screw that's holding this down. So once you loosen that Phillips head screw and those four nuts, this brow loosens, and so it's gonna let you pull this dash out. And when you get the dash out, we'll show that in just a minute here, we'll pass this wire around. Let me show you real quick here what it looks like inside. Do you see these, these areas where we have a screw here pulled out? All of those little bolts there, we'll show a picture of it fully installed. There's another one here. 
all of those are areas where those uh, nine millimeter nuts were pulled off to hold that uh, dash in place. So we'll we'll pull that out and run the wire in just a moment here. All right, so we've done our preparatory steps. We've got our dash pulled apart. We're gonna go ahead and pull this dash out. Uh, just kind of gently coerce it out of, the, out of the, its location there. Uh, we don't want to pull it all the way out, but I just want to just get this corner pulled free. I'm going to take my gauge. It's got a little ball mount on the back side here, which you just simply adhere to the gauge. Yours may come with that ad adhered, yours may not, but just adhere it to the back side of your gauge. Clean this with acetone wheel, and then what we'll do is we'll connect it to our ram mount. Just unscrew that a bit, tighten it back down, find the angle that works for you. And we chose this spot particularly because when we put our hand on the throttle, it doesn't bump above our hand so I like that spot there nice visual, uh, visual for your uh, line of sight so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna take the end of the wire we are going to pull the dash out and I want to run this wire back behind the dash and get the camera in there and you see as I pass this around I'm gonna to try to pass all of that wire down and behind the dash and then when we're done we're gonna have just a little bit remaining it's going to be kind of peeking out and i would recommend you lead just a little bit just so that you can kind of move this thing around a bit if you need to not a lot just uh, to kind of get it where you want it all right i think that's where i've got where i wanted it last time i checked good um that seems to work well i'm going to go back behind the dash and make double sure all of my screw holes are lined up I think, I think that's it now and now that i've got it back where i want it i'll go back in and i'll do all my connections and the last thing we'll do is we'll tighten all the nuts down so that's going to be it for putting in all your wiring for your your gauge now we're going to go into the wiring for the switch to get our power and our ground all right so now we've got our power wire and our ground wire this is all we're going to need to get constant power to the switch with the kit, they sent over two of these T-taps. And I did realize just now that I did not tell you to have a pair of pliers with you. You're gonna to need to have a pair of pliers. All right, so uh, for those of you that never worked with these T-taps before, what you're gonna get with the kit, you're gonna get a purple wire for your power, you're gonna get a black wire for your ground. It's already got a little um, tab on the end here. And then we're gonna have a uh, little clip here that's gonna go on. Notice in the end of it, it's got a little spot here for us to connect this T-tap. Um, so what we'll do is first we will clip onto our hot wire, which is gonna be the yellow wire with the red stripe. See this? And the way that you're gonna clip into this, just simply put your clip in place like this. And we're gonna make sure that the wire is straddling that little, see the little spot there? The little spot on the metal there with the, with the slit in it. We're gonna make sure that it's straddling that. We are going to press hard and then with our pliers we're going to crimp down on that until it snaps so we know that it's got a good bite now because it's snapped down that's our hot wire so we're going to take our purple we're going to press the purple in until it clips like this and i felt it clip so that's good nice bond or nice uh connection there all right now we're going to find our ground wire which is inside the same wiring harness here same thing, we're gonna align this little metal tab that you see with the slit. We'll put it underneath. Make sure that it's straddling it, and then once we've got it where we want it, we'll get our pliers. Bring the camera up over the top here. Get our pliers underneath. We're going to crimp. And I don't think I did a good job on that one. Double sure that I'm good. If you feel like you've crimped it wrong, I would recommend trying a, another. I think they give you one extra. I feel like that's okay now. Um, they give you one extra to make sure that you uh, have not crimped it the wrong way. 
I believe I got a good bite there. All right, we're gonna crimp this on. We're good. All right, so now we've got our wiring uh, inside the dash. We've already just kind of pushed this back in place. We have not tightened anything down yet. I wanna leave all the nuts off until I've tested everything. Before we can test, we're gonna plug in our brain box. So we've got the small plug for the small, we got the large plug for the large. I'll bring the camera over real quick here. I'll try to show you what we're doing. We have the clip here on top. It's got a little thumb, thumb release. I'm going to try to take that clip and plug it into the back side of the box. Can you see it? Now, we've got a good click, so that's good. Same thing here. We've got a little thumb switch on the top. We'll take the large plug, plug it into the large hole there, and we've got a click. We've got a good bite there. That's good. We've got one little pigtail off the end, and if you're wondering what that's for, that's for your GPS puck. We'll do that in just a moment. We have got that all plugged in now. I'm going to just do a quick power check to make sure we've got juice before we move too much farther in the process. All right, I'm going to turn on our switch. Dash is on. We've got power, so we know we're good to go there. I switch everything back off. Turn off my pipe battery. All right. Next step that I want to do, because I've got the wiring all run now, I'm going to go ahead and take my GPS puck, and we are going to run this wire through a hole that I've already pre-drilled. I'll show you the hole. My kind of preference for this setup is to run that wire down a hole that we bored. Uh, ahead of time to save time. This is that 1330 seconds uh, drill bit that I showed you earlier. And if you come right down through the top, you can pull this weather stripping back, come right down through the top here. And we can push that wire down through this hole here. It's just kind of a perfect width for it. We'll take our, uh, wrist, our little plug here, pass it through the hole. We're gonna go all the way through and uh, I'm gonna reach underneath to help it. And we will Get this label through here and all the way through. We've got a lot of cable for this. I'm assuming they give you this cable to give you lots of extra options. We didn't really need much, but that's all right. We'll wind it up and zip tie it away when we're done. You notice on the deck, I've also got a, a Velcro pad here that came with it and a Velcro pad here. So what we'll do is we'll take it, we'll go ahead and secure it in place like this. And then the last thing we'll do, we'll put our weather stripping back into the hole that this weather stripping has moved so i may try to slide this over a little bit when i'm done with my install here but now our puck is in good shape all right next thing we're going to do we're going to put our end connection to the pigtail coming off the, the brain box here all right tight space hopefully you can see this we've got a little thumb latch on the top of the uh, GPS cord here, the puck cord, and then on the other side, you've got a little, lot, a little notch that's open for it, and we will try to slide that together and wait for a click. All right, I think that's good there. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to position our brain box. You can follow the camera up. We're going to position it right up here on the roof here. What I'll do is I'll mark some holes, and I'll drill some pallet holes, and then we'll screw those in with two little uh, aggressive thread screws there to hold that in place. That'll get it up out of the way, keep it from getting water on it, and any kind of your uh, personal items will not come into contact with the box there. All right, well that about wraps it up. So we run uh, our wires from the engine compartment all the way around and up to the helm. We've connected our LCD display, routed it behind the dash panel. We've run our GPS puck, got all those wires run back through. We've mounted our brain box underneath, got that secured in place. Uh, we've tested everything with our electrical, everything's powering up well. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and we're gonna put everything back where we found it. We're gonna put the screws back in the spots for the cup holders and the, behind the dash panel, tighten all the nuts down, make sure everything's secured. We're gonna zip tie all the wiring uh, to make sure it's secure, not gonna move around. We don't want any of those electrical components inside the engine compartment touching anything hot, so we're gonna be careful about that. Uh, and then once we've got all that done, that'll be a complete and total uh, perfect pass installation on your 19 foot Yamaha. Uh, so uh, with that said, we appreciate you watching this video today and we hope it was helpful to you. If you have more information or need more information about the perfect pass system for your Yamaha jet boat, visit us at jetboatpilot.com. There's tons of information there. You, know, you can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, tons of content out there for you. We're available pretty much all the time to answer your questions for you. Jet boating is what we do and uh, it's our passion, so we hope we can help you out in, in some kind of way. And uh, if you like this video, if it was helpful to you, please hit the subscribe button below. It would be very helpful for you for you uh, getting new updates and videos as we, uh, as we release them. So once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.